Hi everyone. Today's topic for discussion is Peridox cell, which is also known as vitamin B6. Regarding the structure or chemistry of vitamin B6, it is a pyridine derivative. Vitamin B6 consists of a mixture of three different closely related pyridine derivatives, namely pyridoxin, which is the alcohol form, and pyridoxal, which is the aldehyde form, and pyridoxamine, which is the amine form of vitamin. So this is a figure for pyridoxin. You can appreciate that an alcohol group is present in this pyridine derivative. And second, this one is the alcohol form of pyridoxin that is also known as pyridoxal which consists of an aldehyde group and the third one which, can, which is the amine derivative of pyridine that is you can see an additional amino group or amine group is present in this figure which is known as pyridoxamine. Now the active form of vitamin B6 which is known as pyridoxal phosphate. Pyridoxal phosphate is formed from phosphorylation of all three forms of vitamin B6. Phosphorylation of all three forms of vitamin B6. Here you can see, for example, pyridoxal plus adenosine triphosphate. In presence of enzyme, pyridoxal kinase enzyme, which is responsible for the phosphorylation, and it leads to the formation of activated pyridoxin that is pyridoxal phosphate. 80% of body's B6 is present as pyridoxal phosphate in muscle in association with glycogen phosphorylase. It is one of the enzyme which requires pyridoxal phosphate as a coenzyme for the glycogen metabolism. Now regarding the sources of vitamin B6, it is abundantly present in yeast or rice polishing wheat gems, cereals, legumes, oil seeds, egg, milk, meat, fish, and green leafy vegetables. The recommended dietary elements or RDA of pyridoxin is related to protein intake and not to the calorie intake. What does it mean? It is related to protein intake means because the majority of the PLP Functions are related to the protein metabolism. Most of the enzyme which is responsible for the protein metabolism requires PLP as a coenzyme and it has a rare function in carbohydrate metabolism. It is there, that is why it is, they said that the requirement is directly related to the protein intake, not to the calorie intake. So, in adult, for an adult, it, we require 1 to 2 milligram per day, and for pregnancy and lactation, it is little more high that is 2.5 milligram per day to meet the fetal growth. Now, next, the biochemical functions of pyridoxal phosphate or pyridoxin, PLP, which is the active form. This PLP is act as coenzyme in many reactions. For example, transamination, decarboxylation, cysteine and methionine metabolism. So, these three actually comes under the protein metabolism. Then there is some role in heme synthesis. Then production of niacin and glycogenolysis. So let's go through one by one. First of all regarding the function of PLP which involves in transamination reaction. So what is transamination? It is an exchange of an amino group between a keto acid. So the formation of new amino acid and new keto acid. So transaminases are the enzyme which are responsible for the transamination. Here gives the example of aspartate transaminase where aspartate which is an amino acid gives its amino group to a keto acid that is alpha ketoglutarate and exchange of this thing and leads to the synthesis of new amino acid as glutamic acid and new keto acid as oxaloacetate. So the enzyme responsible is amino transferase enzyme or transaminase. In this case, it is aspartate transaminase enzyme. 
This aspartate transaminase enzyme which requires pyridoxal phosphate as coenzyme. Now the second biochemical function of PLP is it just involves in decarboxylation reaction. So the amino acid which undergoing alpha decarboxylation and forms corresponding amines. So the first one tyrosine. Tyrosine undergoing decarboxylation to form tyramine and carbon dioxide. Then histidine. Histidine undergoing transamination, sorry, decarboxylation to form histamine. Histamine, we know that which is a vasodilator and it helps to lower the blood pressure and it is, in, it is also involved in allergic reactions. Then catecholamines like synthesis of like dopamine, then noradrenaline, then and adrenaline. And synthesis of these catecholamines from tyrosine, which requires PLP dependent dopa decarboxylase enzyme. And we know that catecholamines are neurotransmitters and involved in metabolic and nervous regulation. Now, synthesis of serotonin and melatonin. Serotonin is synthesized from 5 hydroxy tryptophan, which undergoing decarboxylation to form serotonin usually which is synthesized from tryptophan and we know that serotonin which is a neurotransmitter and stimulates the cerebral activity melatonin which has not shown here melatonin is a sleep inducing substance and is involved in regulation of circadian rhythm of body now next is the decarboxylation of glutamic acid which leads to the production of GABA. What is GABA? GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter which is derived from glutamic acid on decarboxylation. So whenever there is deficiency of vitamin B6 which leads to decreased production of GABA and which can be leading to convulsions that is epileptic seizures in infants and children. And two more examples are given that is decarboxylation of cysteine to taurine and decarboxylation of serine to ethanolamine. All these enzymatic reaction or decarboxylation reaction which requires pyridoxal phosphate as coenzyme. Now the third function of pyridoxal phosphate is that it has some role in sulfur containing amino acid metabolism. Specifically the transmethylation and transsulfuration reaction. Specifically, homocysteine for the conversion of homocysteine to cystathionine, which is a transsulfuration reaction. The enzyme responsible is cystathionine synthase enzyme. So, homocysteine condensed with the serine to form cystathionine in presence of cystathionine synthase enzyme. This requires pyridoxal phosphate as coenzyme. And this cystathionine again which is cleaved into homozerine and cysteine by another enzyme, cystathionase enzyme, which also requires pyridoxal phosphate as the coenzyme. So the next function is it has some role in heme biosynthesis. So the first step of heme biosynthesis in human body is the condensation of lysine with succinyl coenzyme in presence of Delta amino levulinic acid synthase enzyme. In short, we can say it is ALA synthase enzyme, and the product is delta amino levulinic acid. This ALA synthase also requires pyridoxal phosphate as the coenzyme. So we can understand that deficiency of PLP can lead to decreased production of heme, so which can also lead to anemia. Now the next function is that the production of Niacin. What is niacin? It is a vitamin. So 3-hydroxy kynurenine. This reaction is actually the synthesis of niacin from an amino acid tryptophan. It is the one of the intermediate steps for the synthesis of niacin from tryptophan. Here, pyridoxal phosphate is required for niacin coenzyme synthesis from tryptophan. You can see kynurenine is a specific enzyme which is required for the production of nicotine adenine, nicotine 
nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. This kinorenanase enzyme also requires pyridoxal phosphate. And the next function, glycogenolysis. It has some role in glycogenolysis. The enzyme glycogen phosphorylase, which is covalently bound to pyridoxal phosphate. Glycogen phosphorylase, we know that, which is the rate limiting enzyme for the glycogenolysis. So, this glycogen phosphorylase, which needs PLP as a coenzyme for the action. And moreover, in the previous slide, we have seen that the majority of the PLP is present in muscles. So, muscle is a region where it is mainly responsible for the glycogenolysis. So, this is all about the biochemical functions of pyridoxal phosphate. Now, let us go in detail about the deficiency of pyridoxal phosphate. As a pyridoxin which occurs in almost all the foods, the dietary deficiency of vitamin B6 is rare. But still, if at all the deficiency occurs, the main clinical symptoms of deficiency are neurological manifestation, dermatological manifestation and hematological manifestation. So let us see one by one. The first one, neurological manifestations. It can again divide into three categories, mild deficiency, severe deficiency and peripheral neuropathy. So in mild deficiency of vitamin B6, it can lead to symptoms like irritability, then depression and confusion, nervousness, etc. All these are due to the decreased production of neurotransmitters like GABA, then catecholamines and serotonin. So in severe deficiency, it leads to epileptic seizures, that is convulsions in infants due to reduced production of GABA and other neurotransmitters. And the next is that peripheral neuropathy due to defective myelin synthesis, demyelination of nerves which causes peripheral neuropathy. Why? Because vitamin B6 is required for the synthesis of sphincolipids which is needed for myelin formation. That is another one of the function of vitamin B6 which we have not mentioned. Remember, B6 is required for the synthesis of sphingolipid. So, in prolonged deficiency, it can be leads to peripheral neuropathy. Next is dermatological manifestation. Since vitamin B6 is essential for the synthesis of niacin from tryptophan, it can even lead to deficiency of niacin-like symptoms like pellagra. Pellagra-like Similar specifically the dermatological changes you can appreciate the castles, necklace and uh, uh, dermatitis, glossitis etc. also can be seen in the vitamin uh, B6 deficiency. And the next one is hematological manifestations. Vitamin B6 deficiency which leads to hypochromic microcytic anemia due to decreased heme synthesis. So we have seen one of the function of B6 was ALA synthase enzyme which requires PLP as coenzyme which is the first step of heme biosynthesis. So it can lead to hypochromic microcytic anemia. So this is all about vitamin B6. So you should focus on the biochemical functions and deficiency manifestations of vitamin B6. Thank you.